Need to know how to make a video breakdown from your Photoshop projects? Then you are in the right place. Hey guys, your man Dan here, and if it's your first time here, I create stuff all about productivity, filmmaking, and also photography, which leads me on nicely to this little Photoshop tutorial. I'm gonna show you how you can create a breakdown layer animation video all in Photoshop. So let's get cracking. So here is the Photoshop project I want to use for a layer breakdown video. Yes, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan and I'm proud of it. Head on over to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and scroll down until you find Trim End to Playhead. We want to create a keyboard short link for this. Warning, don't use an important shortcut that you already use all the time. It will override it. So I'm going to use a brand new one like Shift, Control, and the Equals button. Once that's done, click OK. We don't have to worry about that step again for the future because we have now sorted it. Don't worry, that little keyboard shortcut will come into play a little bit later. You wait and see. Next, click on over to Window, then Timeline, and that will open up this section below right here. Now click Create Video Timeline. Look at that. We now have a video timeline very similar to Premiere Pro or Final Cut. Each one of these purple layers here are the layers that you originally made in your Photoshop file stacked up on top of each other. Now at the moment, it's just gonna play that final static image. So what we need to do is select this little icon situated on the top right of the timeline box, select Convert Frames and click on Make Frames from Clips. And boom, we now have all the layers filed away into little frames. Okay, next up, we need to clean the end of the timeline here as we've got a shed load of empty space after the final layer here. Click here to reveal the playhead, head back over to that little icon again to the right, this time select Work Area, then click on Set End to Playhead. Now I'm going to give the last frame a little bit more time so the viewer has time to process the final image. So I'm going to set the end a little further back to compensate for that. And now we're going to use that little keyboard shortcut we made to bring all the layers to finish at this end spot. You can either select each layer here on the left and use the keyboard shortcut or here on the right and do the same. Whatever takes your fancy. Just be aware if you have any group layers in folders, you're gonna need to open them up and make sure that all of them are stretched out to the end of the timeline too. Otherwise, the animation will look a bit weird. Okay, I'm gonna forward past this point because it's boring and you get the gist of it. Now when you hit that play button, it will animate like so. As you can see, it's a little bit too fast for my liking. Simple fix, head over to this icon situated at the bottom left here, and this is where you can set the duration of each frame. At the moment, it's set to 0.07, which is way too fast in my humble opinion. So what we're gonna do is click on the icon again on the right, and then select all frames. Click on the little down arrow on the bottom of any individual frame here, really doesn't matter which one, and choose your duration. You can click on the suggested ones here or decide your own custom timeline. It's totally your preference on how long you want the video to be, but I'm gonna click other and go for 0.3. It's sort of a happy medium there, I reckon. Cool. Also, if you're gonna be creating an animated GIF instead of a video, you can select how many times you want it to loop from not looping at all to looping forever. Now, I just want this animation to go through once, so when it gets to the end, it will just stop. If you need to view the timeline again to make any tweaks, click on the icon here on the bottom left to toggle back over to that. All that's left to do now is to convert the file to video format. To do that, hit the icon button again to the right here and then select render video. From there, we can choose what format and preset we want the final render to be. Very similar to Premiere Pro. All that's left to do is hit that render button and you are done. Now, if you want to save the animation as a GIF, Head on over to File, then Export, then select Save for Web Legacy. On the drop down menu, select GIF. Make sure your colors are set to the highest, which is 256. Now I'm just gonna reduce the image size here to 1500 to make that file size a little bit smaller. Down below here is where you can choose how many times you want the GIF to loop. In this case, I want it to loop continuously, so I'm gonna keep it set to forever. And all you need to do now is save it and you are done. If you are still here, thanks so much for watching to the end. I think that's the universe telling you to hit that subscribe button. So with that all being said, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.